Hi, I'm Kate Genby. I'm a PhD candidate in sociology at the University of Arizona. And this is a kind of part two in a video on merging data in data. It's part of a series on how to append, merge, and collapse your data um, using data. So for this video, I'm going to kind of just pick up right where the last merge video cut off. So if you haven't seen the first part of the how to merge data, you might want to go back and watch that video first. So what we're going to do now is merge multiple data sets together. Um, so I've opened up this house data set that we've used before. And then we're going to merge this data um, using the unique number and uh, the one mini merge using the unique number. And we're going to use the person data set, um, which we already did before. We can see that that went through successfully. And then let's say we also want to add the worker data to this data set. So first I'm going to do this um, without changing the underscore merge variable so that you can see what happens. So this is going to be a one-to-one -one merge because we now have, um, let's see, it's a one-to-many merge because our master data set is still the housing data. Um, and we're going to use the unique number. And then we're also going to need the person number. Um, let me find that. So we're using the unique number for the household and then the person number for the individuals within the household. So that way we can line up that data across the different data sets. Um, so first I'm going to do this as a one to many since our um, household data is the master data set. And it's going to give us an error because merge underscore merge is already defined. So what we need to do in this case is we either drop the merge variable um, or what I'm going to do is actually save it as something new. Um, so we're going to uh, generate a variable called um, merge1 and it will be equal to underscore merge. Um, so now we see that we have this merge one is added at the end, um, and then we can drop merge. Okay, so now we're going to go back up and try merging the data sets again. So we see that um, we now have added on the worker data. So not only do we have the household and the people, we now have the worker information for the people. And all of these um, should look pretty familiar from the last video. Um, so just to give you a sense of what the data set looks like now, since I've been describing it at these other steps in the previous video, um, you can see that got even more variables now. So we're up to 203 variables. We still have the same number of people, so the same 106,000 people for the number of observations. Um, and then you'll also see that we now have um, both the merge data from the first merge, which is called merge one, and then we have the new data um, from the most recent work merge, which is called underscore merge. Another thing that you can do to make sure the merge works correctly or the way that you expected is to create a table for the merge variable to actually see what happened. Um, so here we have uh, a table that tells us that for these 35,000 cases or about 33% of the data set, we only have them in the master. Um, and then for the other uh, 70,992 cases, um, they were matched across all of the data sets. Um, and what's important to note here is that our master data set is now the first two data set combined. Um, and then matched is matched with this new data set. So this is a process, if you're, especially if you're merging a whole bunch of different data sets together, you're going to want to check as you go. Um, 
if you wait until the end, it's going to be very confusing to figure out if something went wrong along the way um, when you have missing data that's systematic for specific data sets that have been merged. So now I'm going to show you something that you can do using merge um, that you might not usually think of as merging data. So what I've opened here is um, a portion of the Stanford protest data set. And this data set has um, a bunch of string variables for organization names, specifically social movement organization names. And so what I'm going to show you is how we can clean up the naming scheme um, to ultimately create a new data set with a better list of names and then merge that back onto the original data set. Um, so what we're going to do here is look at a specific variable um, called SMO name one. Um, so actually, first let me sh start off by describing the data set for you, just so you get a sense of what it looks like. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of variables. Um, so we have. 104 variables and 10,115 observations. And again, this is a subset of the entire data set. I'm just looking at ones that actually have some sort of name listed for the first social movement organization, just for the purposes of this example. So what we're going to do first is um, I'm going to preserve the data set and then just give you a sense of what those names look like um, before we start doing anything. I'm going to do a 1% sample just to give you a, a short list. Um, and then we're going to list SMO name one. Um, so here we see examples of what these names look like. So you can see most of them are in capitals. Um, but there's a couple examples that are all lowercase. Um, and then some of them where there's a mix of lower and uppercase as well. So we'll start by um, generating a new variable name um, and then just making these changes using functions where we're going to um, change all of the names into lowercase. Uh, and you can also change everything into uppercase or to make it proper. So actually I'll show you upper and proper first and then we'll end in lowercase. So what I'm going to do, since we've preserved the data and sampled, we're going to go back to the full set. So we'll restore the original. Um, data the way it was before. And then what we're going to do is change it all into uppercase. So we need to generate a new variable. So we're going to call this SMO1. And um, it will be a upper of SMO name 1. And um, I'm going to do preserve sample one list SMO one so you can see what that looks like. And so here we see that now everything is capitalized. Um, and so now we'll restore. And now what we're going to do is we'll try proper just so you can see what that looks like. So we're going to um, generate SMO2 proper. And so I'm going to preserve the data again. And we'll um, sample 1% again. And then the list of SMO2. And so here you can see that all of the names begin with a capital, and then the rest of the letters are all in lowercase. We're going to restore again. And then finally, we'll create what I actually want, which is to generate SMO3, um, which would be a lowercase version of SMO name 1. And one more time, we're going to preserve the data, sample 1%, list SMO3, so you can see what that looks like. And now we see they're entirely in lowercase. Um, and we'll restore that again. You can work with the whole data set. 
So now what we want to do is make sure there aren't any extra spaces or marks in between um, the variables or also any spaces at the beginning or end of the names in the string. Um, so what we'll start by doing is uh, generating SMO4, which will be a trimmed version of SMO3. So we're going to keep on using this um, new variable we've created where everything is in lowercase, and then trim any extra trailing spaces. And we'll do a sample, or we're going to preserve the data. Sample 1%, to a list of SMO4. And um, we can, not that we saw a lot of trailing spaces before, but now we know there aren't any trailing spaces in there. And we'll restore. And then I'm going to save this data set to make sure that we have saved all these changes. So we're going to save it as Stanford 2, and then clear. So for the sake of time, I went ahead and um, restored and then saved that data set off so that we have this new SMO name that's been modified. Um, so that we can work with it. What you would want to do if you're actually trying to you know, fix your own data set is keep on going through and creating a list of names and look for other things that you can clean up um, and then use other functions to kind of keep on generating new variable names until you get the cleanest, most kind of um, uniform data set that you can on that variable so that then any cases that are the same thing are going to look the same and thus be read the same way within Data. So once you have that list exactly how you want it, then what you want to do is um, type in by the variable that you're using. So in this case, we're on SMO5, SMO4, um, and sort, you want to keep if underscore n equals 1. And so we've gotten rid of a bunch of missing observations. Um, and so we're going to keep just that specific variable. So we're doing SMO4. Now all of our other variables have gone away. So now what we're going to do is actually turn this SMO4 variable, which is a string variable, into a numeric variable. And so the way we do that is we're going to do encode um, SMO4. And we're going to generate a new variable, which we're going to call SMO5. And so now you'll see that we have a string variable and a long variable. Um, and let me actually go into um, the browser so we can see what the data actually looks like. You can see that the, the names look the same. We have them in red on the left and then in blue on the right. Um, but when you actually hover over this, we have a number that shows up for each of these new social movements. If you look right here, you'll see that this is organization number three, four, five, and so on. And so this, since we were nearing the time limit for that video, I went ahead and saved off that data set, including both the SMO name, or SMO4 name in the string variable, and then SMO5 in the numeric variable. So now I'm back with the Stanford Q data set that we were using earlier. And what I'm gonna do is sort it by SMO4, and then I'm going to actually merge on that old data, the data set I was working with previously. Um, so it's a mini to one merge on the variable of SMO4 using this new Stanford 4 data set. And here we see that everything matched properly, um, and then we can describe it also, and we'll see that we have this new SMO5 that's in long. Um, whereas SMO4 is in the string variable. And so that way we now have a number for every single social movement um, that's in this list that we're using in our original data set. So this is another way that you can use merge um, to help you, even if you aren't actually combining data sets, but rather to um, kind of get more out of the data set very quickly.